But after being runners up in the 2019 qualifiers, um, they lost 17 straight ODIs. And uh, since 2019, they've lost T20s as well, about six or seven of them. And um, I almost think it's a little bit unlucky for them because this World Cup was supposed to be last year and in Australia, uh, where a number of their players have played great cricket. Um, so considering all that, would you would you say they've been a touch unlucky along with a string of just bad form? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I believe the statistic was 640 days they went without international cricket. Um, that is absolutely insane. You know, how it's so, I mean, I, I certainly do feel for them. Um, at, at, yeah, and, and really it, it does come down to that. The men's team not playing for 640 days. How do you go from that to, to suddenly, you know, going back to your former selves, right? If, if COVID-19 did not happen and we had the World Cup in 2020 and they had that time to fly around, you know, tour X and Y country, do some more uh, T20I specific prep um, in, in the Middle East, I, I think we would have had a much, much different result. Um, they would have been a lot more competitive. And we actually saw flashes of what PNG is capable of throughout the tournament. In that game against Oman, it, it, at one point, it really looked like they were, they were going to push 160. And from my perspective, at one point in that game, they actually looked like favorites, right? And then it all went pear-shaped. There was that big collapse for them, right? But PNG, and especially with their fielding, their fielding throughout the tournament was fantastic, right? But coming back to, you know, that long streak of them, you know, losing, I'm not actually entirely sure of the statistic, but you know, losing more than a dozen white ball games uh, on the trot. The strange thing about PNG is uh, they actually started the World Cricket League Championship by, I believe, winning eight ODIs or eight list A fixtures in a row. 